So welcome to Journey in Entrepreneurship. This is Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss, and I am super excited to be bringing to you another installment of an amazing woman of color entrepreneur who is doing her thing. I'm going to introduce you to Nakia Felipe. She is life liberation coach, spiritual mentor, and speaker and healer. How are you doing, Nakia? Hi. Hi, I'm good. Hey, everyone. Thank you for having me. I am so glad that you were able uh, to join us today. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been an entrepreneur. Ooh, um, goodness. Well, it started in part uh, because I was on a spiritual journey and I found myself in interfaith seminary and I loved it so much, um, working with people, supporting people, spiritual mentorship. And so I started doing things in relation to spiritual practice and doing rituals. And it was presented to me that this is something that could actually be a business. Um, and then I went and I got my master's degree. I really got bit by the spiritual psychology bug. I love that so much. And that's when I got involved in transformative coaching. And of course, it just made sense at that point for that to segue into boss moves um, and what we uh, are terming as entrepreneurship, which I actually don't like to use that term. <laughs> okay, so what's the word you like? I like boss, B-A-U-C-E, boss. I um, love that, boss. Yeah, it's fun, I'm a boss. <laughs> um, I like to infuse everything I do in business with fun because the initial days and steps and, you know, officially I've been in entrepreneurship somewhat on and off just because I'm switching uh, between um, uh, doing ceremony and then into different types of coaching on and off probably about the last five to six years. Um, but it got stressful in the beginning because as much as I love doing what I do, the piece that make you an entrepreneur, the marketing and the uh, visibility and the social media and the paperwork and the accounting and the legal and um, it don't feel fun. <laughs> and it, it feels <laughs> like it snatches um, me away from the work, which yes. is why I'm into it. I'm like, gosh, I'm spending all this time on marketing and things and networking and all of these things. And I, I haven't you know, a such and such amount of time has gone by and, you know, I might've coached someone, but definitely not as much as I would like to, or I might've done ceremony, but definitely the business piece took over more. And so now everything I do is very spirit led. Um, so if it don't feel fun, I put it on the shelf and find what feels good to me. Um, now that I've educated myself on all the pieces that I need in play. Okay. Um, and so now I'm, I'm deciding a little bit more who I want to be as that boss or as that CEO. And entrepreneur just has certain connotations of stress <laughs> and instability. <laughs> and yeah, I made 500 on Wednesday and then nothing for 30 days. It just has these associations that I kind of wanted to shake off. Perfect. So that's actually a great segue into my next question, which is, you know, as you've been bossing it, you know, <laughs> what were some of the things that, and I think you probably already alluded to it, but what are two things that you really struggled with in the beginning compared to where you are now in your journey? Because it's an online business I, I, in the beginning, especially because I came through school, um, the clients that I had were word of mouth, um, you know, maybe sending out emails to my own network and then those people reaching out or someone heard me speak somewhere. Um, so it was a lot of local business. Once I decided I wanted to take things online, well, now there were all these moving parts that I had to learn about and everybody has a different theory and it's a gajillion guru. <laughs> so something I had to learn to do was to focus my attention. Like, all right, well, you know, what strategy feels the best to me? Because they all, to some extent, work, right? Yeah. But if you're trying to do all of them at the same time, you're expending so much energy and you're just kind of doing busy work and spinning your wheels. That's right. And it wasn't until I said, all right, I'm going to build, say, my social media up and figure out how to connect with people kind of in this cyberspace. All right. now, And, and it doesn't take a long time to, to ground yourself that way. Maybe a week, maybe two weeks to go, okay, this is what that flow is. All right. I put that in place. So to, to a huge thing that I would say to people too, that project management piece one thing at a time that what you're focusing on in that point of point in time doesn't mean you don't have a few projects going on, but if Tuesday you're working on project a and you want to get from point A to point B with that project, 
that is what you should be doing. That's when great. we try to put our hands in all of these different pots at the same time, because we've heard how powerful all these different tactics are, it doesn't necessarily multiply their effectiveness if you are expending yourself so much and you end up making yourself miserable that's so so true i went through that process so that was definitely something that i struggled with in the beginning is getting that focus and the other thing is um messaging and no matter what you do in business you should know who you are in that so if you make jewelry if you in your case do travel um in my case life coach i really had to own the truth of who am I? What are my personal values? What do I want people to say about me and my business when they're not in the room with me? Yes. Um, to really establish what that is and get clear. People talk about niching all the time, but that basically is what niching is, is deciding, okay, even in this space, like travel would seem like a niche, but even in travel, what's your story? What's the humanity behind and I, and I refer mm-hmm. to that as vision. So when okay. people think about your business, what is the vision that you see them, the feeling, the, the you know, what do they want to touch, smell, and feel about you? And then that is what you want to make sure that you stay true to. So um, that's yeah. really important. That's really you want important. people to feel like they're not interacting with an entity, an institution, or a thing. They're interacting yes. with a human being. That's right. And- Part of the reason why they go with you and opposed to say someone else who does something similar is because they also want to be in connection with your energy, your vibe, your values, you know, what you bring to the table. So those are the two things that I think I had to be told like 20 times. Before I was- <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, because you my message like, I'm like, hard-headed, so I had to be told at least a hundred times, like, what do you mean I have to be the forefront of my business? I don't want anybody connecting with me. I don't, you know, I want to be invisible. Right. So it's a very hard lesson for me. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and it just happened on my mind to say, and I've been doing this a lot more lately, market research, it is the lifeblood of everything. And it's probably the thing people just kind of skip over. And market research in the way of talking to people. Yes. It is so powerful. And, and just to record that and to get people's actual words and what they're actually feeling rather than assuming what people are thinking and feeling, it, it has been one of the most transformative things. And even me honing, okay, this is what I'm bringing to the table, now marrying it to what they're saying that they need. Absolutely. And coexist and live together. Um, really, really powerful thing to do. And that is no matter what it is you do, product-based, whatever, that is service-based, that is so paramount. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things people ignore in the beginning and you kind of wish you had done it sooner. So for those that are listening, I hope that you hear that because we just had a class on marketing <laughs> research um, in June. And so if you missed it, you want to reach out and find out how to do that. You heard it just from another entre- uh, boss a lady um, oh. about boss. I love that. I totally am going to use that. Um, uh, how powerful and important market research is to your business. That's great, Nakia. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else in terms of lessons learned that you want to share? Mm. Well, I will say um, you want to decide before each day what you want to get done the next day. Those that. 20 item to-do lists will make you a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> you one crazy person. <laughs> well, you'll set yourself up to feel like a failure almost every day. Every single so day. I think that you will get to every single day, every single thing on your list in addition to if you got kids and a family and your job and you got to go to the store and all these extra things that are going to make their way into your day anyway if you could just pick and I my clients are so resistant to this in the beginning like three I'm sure I can do I no. can do like 20 what is right with you? no start with because sometimes the three things turn into more things yeah depending on how well you're at uh chunking things down but deciding the night before I'm going to set the intention that I am going to get to this thing or make this phone call especially if it's something that you're a little trepidatious about mm-hmm. something that's out of your comfort zone something that requires a stretch sometimes it's enough to do one stretch thing yeah. in that day I love that a victory that's right Instead of staying with all the little safe things, getting that toughest thing done first is also um, a real key thing. And what I tell people, again, because I'm very spiritually centered, is I like to do something um, that connects me to my highest wisdom before I start. 
um, and create an environment that's fun. Yes. Very much like my clients will tell you, I say all the time, keep it light. You're making it too deep. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep it light. Keep it light. What can keep it light? You know, and it's the same uh, task, but you're orienting yourself to it mm -hmm. differently um, to yeah, make it dread. Like, oh, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It's not, it's not huge. People do whatever it is you're attempting to do. There's a ton of people out there that do it every day and don't yes. get enough. So just get it done. <laughs> just, just get it done because at the end of the day, remembering why you're doing it. And again, that's one of those things that's really hard for people to connect to sometimes. They think they know why. But what I also like to say to people a lot is if your why doesn't make your heart beat faster and bring a tear to your eye, it ain't it. That's right. That, that's that really that powerful. Why, that why should snatch you up out of your bed. That's right. And that's you like, <laughs> yes, I get to work on this today. Oh, like <laughs> Yeah, you've got my you got my hair standing up because yeah. that's so true. Like if you if your hairs don't stand up and right. it brings you significant joy, and I tell people that all the time. If if you do not like love of what you do, the niche or whatever it is that you you've decided to do, you know, there's too much crap in, in in running a business that will keep you in the bed as opposed to make you want to get out of bed. So exactly. make sure you are in love with it. That's such you great advice. Be, you want to be lit. That's right. That's baby. right. Brings and sometimes that lit may scare you a little bit because it's tapping into like this really deep level of power that you have that you've been holding in. And so yes. sometimes it makes you a little nervous. And sometimes that nervousness is an indication like, ooh, that might just very well be that thing that gives yeah. you that energy. Yeah. That gets you going. So, I yeah. love that. I love that. So we've talked about kind of the things that you struggled with when you first started. So many of the people that are listening to us right now, they're either on the fence um, of becoming a boss or they have been a boss and they probably feel like just a boy because they haven't got the sauce down yet. <laughs> um, so what are some tips or recommendations that you would have for people who are thinking about, you know, jumping into this? And this, this is, you know, owning your own business and being yeah. boss. And, and, and the idea of boss life. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is experiment. Mm. Um, you don't, you, you might have a business idea. Sometimes people hesitate because they're not really sure it's viable, not really sure. Hence the market research. Yes. Um, definitely helps you know if you are marrying a passion with a, a real need in the marketplace. Um, but one of the things that helps is to get out, you know, a lot of times when coaches start, they coach anybody because it's just like, well, all right, let me feel this out and see if this mm -hmm. is something that I really enjoy. Um, same thing with fitness trainers. They'll just start working out with people and just see. So if you're not absolutely sure what the experience will be, you know, life is an adventure, like experiment with it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a long process yeah. but experiment with it so that's one thing if you're not sure um i love going to groups that are in the range of what i do so like say if it's travel you know going to travel based events and um things where i'm going to meet other entrepreneurs that are doing the very thing that i think i might want to do yeah um, uh, other people that are out there living the life that you want to live these are models um uh maybe celebrity level people they're kind of like your 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 role like your role models in your head i like to say people are my mentor in my head yes i love that and find everything that they're doing look at what programs they have going look at their websites read their books see their youtube videos their podcasts whatever so that you can take in that information and really see all they're usually really good at sharing and then this is a little bit of a stretch but contact them yes you know, I love if there's that. somebody that's doing a thing that you would like to be doing and, you know, you'd like to do an informational interview, you want to maybe get on Zoom with them, you know, for a 15 minute, whatever, as long as you present it as a win-win, um, you know, you're offering something as you're asking for their time um, and, and you look for ways that you can also be a contribution to what they do, being that yep. you admire them so much. If you can come to the table with that, you'd be surprised just how much a person is like, really, me? Okay. Really, me? Like, like yeah. you want to talk to me? You, about me 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 for me? Me? you know, yeah. and so now you, you've expanded your network and you've uplifted your network um, in the area that it is that you want to explore. So for those people that you, you mentioned that are in that thinking mode, you want to get in the end because a lot of the thinking mode too is a lot of us have an employee mentality and mm -hmm. having like said put that off on the end of that boss 
partially because it's not familiar, especially a lot of yeah, us they don't who know. didn't grow up around, you know, business owners, CEOs, you know, but maybe people in, in, in job positions where to some degree they're looking to other people and other entities to to for how things yeah. work um, and establish how things work. So it, it helps to be in the company um, and in the circle of people that are doing the things that you want to do. And for people that are maybe jaded from old, um, experiences i would say search yourself for the lessons that it taught you mm -hmm. um for why things didn't work that is just a success principle failure is a part of people's climb to success and what the people who continue to move through it they don't freeze at the point that things went down there are people that open and close they'll have 10 businesses five of them will fail five of them will do really well all we'll know about is the what i like to call the front stage that's right. we don't know anything backstage and the things that fail that's and right. then another person will have one business that'll fail i'm totally jaded i can't deal no more can and that's why again. I look at those models because those models will often tell you oh yeah yeah i failed at that and i failed at that and that didn't yep. work and what i learned from that failure was this and what i learned from that failure is that and then with that new information in play searching yourself again and checking in with your inner wisdom to know okay this way is being made and being opened and that was a part of the journey in getting there I love that. I actually sort of think of myself as trying to master my failure game <laughs> because yes. once I master it, that means I've been successful in something. So I fail a lot of businesses. Fail forward. I've heard right. that. Yeah. But yeah. certainly uh, pick yourself up and keep going. And I do like the experimentation that recommendation that you gave because it's true. I mean, and, and for my audience, you know, you all are in the travel industry which is huge. And there's so many things that you can start with. Um, but doesn't mean that's your journey for like the rest of your bossness, right? You can try it out. I just tell people when they try something out, give it six months or greater yeah. to have experimented, explored it, get the knowledge, expertise, and play around in it before you switch. Because that's usually anywhere six months to 12 months is a really good am amount of time. And you believe, believe me, it's, it goes by quickly. It's not like, you know, this, six months is, oh, that's a really long time. No, <laughs> we're not, we're not in our teens, right? So six months is like a day. <laughs> it's like a couple really, of days. It really, really is. Um, it was another thought that I had. Um, oh, deciding what it's supposed to look like. Mm-hmm. So like even in, and I don't know a whole lot about um, the travel business specifically, but my creative piece says that can look a lot of different ways. Oh, it can. A lot of different approaches. I've, I've seen um, some things online that I thought were really cool, just as a person who loves to travel, with like these travel groups, and, and that's their way of, of um, expanding their their network of people is having these really amazing travel experiences with all these strangers. Everybody goes by themselves, and they all meet there. Yeah or someplace exotic and they all kind of and I was like wow that's an interesting take on being a travel agent there's one I saw I forget the name of it but she brings black women together to have these yeah. really interesting kind of experiences together and so there's so many different ways it can look and sometimes when we're looking at the way it's heavily presented to us we don't consider well how would this be the most fulfilling and fun for me what would it look like if i were to do it my way or have yes. my take on it in addition to doing the things that work so sometimes people get locked into the way it's supposed to look and that way might not be what brings you the most fulfillment in the process i think it's really important because i know your background um in propelling african-american women and i'm going to sort of segue into that by saying this very thing because you mentioned the lady there's several groups that deal with uh traveling women of color uh just you know uh, there's a whole following on instagram of you know black people do travel hashtag i think it's like black travel hashtag black travel i guess i wanted to just take a stop on a, a moment as because you know my target audience is to propel African-American women in the travel industry and so that they can be successful and have successful businesses. And the way that we show up in the industry is underrepresented currently in the industry. So when you think of traveling to these exotic places, what we call exotic, you know, African-American people because of economics or situation or family haven't felt comfortable with doing that. 
And there's huge opportunity for um, us as professionals to get more African-American families, people, individuals traveling and creating those groups around color. And so you mentioned it, that you've seen it and I've seen it. And, you know, we are in a unique position as travel professionals to help facilitate that and start the conversation. Um, and there's a lot of groups that I'm a part of that really deal with travel of color, you know, solo traveling of color, all of that. And so I just think it's a great, this is a great time to be a woman travel yeah. boss, you know, um, and trying to start your business because, you know, we're ready like this time and no other time. I feel like in history, it's a great time to be black, <laughs> like, yes. to be black and like to do whatever the hell you want to do. Right. You want to do travel. You want to be your own boss. You want to work for somebody. I mean, I just see so many first of everything. And I just, I just say jump, but that's your, if that's on your heart. Do it, make it happen. Don't be afraid. It's true. The, I told you um, I'm going to Ghana in August uh -huh. and I found a black owned travel agency that specifically focuses on connecting those of us of the diaspora back to Africa. Love and that. the first question on the contract is, are you black? Do you, I, do <laughs> I love it. Do you, do you live your life as a black person? Do you understand it? <laughs> like, you can even black live your life, but if you don't live your life as a black person, you like, can't know. <laughs> all the angles, ain't when nobody coming in, like, do you understand it? If you are not a black person, this is designed specifically. So it's not just us visiting as tourists. There are things that are planned as part of the itinerary and everything to help us have these, you know, reconnection experiences, which is what I was looking Love for. that. And that is... You know, like what you said, these are all these different ways and angles to to because I think some of us don't even consider going certain places um, as a community uh, that maybe if there were entities in, in, in place that look like us, it's like, oh, snap, everybody's going to, you know, wherever in the world. Yeah. I'll be a little more open to it. You know, yes. usher us into a different way of thinking about travel. That's right. I think that's that that is just so on point. I think that's great. So I think this is a perfect segue in terms of talking about specifically what your organization does um, and what do you have to offer for our community. So, okay. Well, like you said, I am a life liberation coach. I focus solely on Black women, the incline of Black women, um, and everything that I do is in relation to healing, self love, self confidence clarity and creation. Um, and I, if I could just describe the vision, this is the vision um, that always comes to me when I talk about my work. And it's basically this idea of barren land. I have a bucket. It's a very thick, murky water. I dump the water out. I turn around the other side of me. It's a waterfall. I love waterfalls. It's a powerful waterfall. And the water that's coming from it is really clear. And everything around it is green and it's lush. And I fill the bucket up. And I turn back to the barren land and I look in the bucket and the bucket has clear water in it. And I dump that water into the barren land and things start to grow. And what that means to me, what that symbolism means to me is that barren land is our history. I like to look at things not just as personal things that need to be healed, but also collective things that need to be healed, historic things that need to be healed. These are all things that are connected. And when we're dealing with murky water, right, murky things that live inside of us, I look at the water as kind of how we feel. And we dump that out. That, that dumping out is healing, it's release, it's forgiveness. And then we turn to something powerful and majestic like our inner wisdom, our inner goddesses, our inner queens. And we fill it up with that clear water. And that clear water is not just clarity, it's also self-confidence, self-love, and, and self-liberation from within. And we pour that water into something barren. We not only heal ourselves, but we heal our ancestors. We heal our family members, and we also help to release the future generations that are coming through us, through our womb spaces. Um, into I just the love world. to hear you talk, girl. You always make me want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> to our original greatness. So all of the programs, which I'm developing one now, um, and I'll keep everybody posted about it, um, but basically I'm developing a three-month program where we do what that imagery is. Um, and at the end of it, there's a high level of clarity about every area of your life and the process also of healing. There'll be spiritual practices and all kinds of just really yummy things um, that we'll be doing together. So I'll keep you posted. I'll have the links and everything. But to stay in connection with me, please join Black Queen Stand Up. Woo! 
Trendy is uh, also a member. It's a wonderful community, sisterhood, sacred sisterhood. It is a safe space. I know people are jaded from other groups. I don't tolerate any low vibe, nothing in the group. Um, so group. this is a place to come to, to ask advice, support, be uplifted, um, lovely just images and sharings. And, and everyone is, it's such a diverse group of women, um, of black women, you know, and all of us have the same goal to uplift us and to just really gain an understanding of sisterhood because we all want it, but sometimes people don't fully understand how to engage or how to build it, how to grow it. So that's what we're doing. So we're Black Queen Stand Up. Look us up on Facebook. Um, well, will be link, um, yeah. in, in this post so um, they're already there so all you have to do is click on it it's a great group I love the one thing I always, and I don't know that I've told you this the one thing I really love is every morning as she does an affirmation yes. um, and she posts an affirmation and asks you to say it and you know commit to that affirmation for the day um, and it's just a beautiful way to start your day so I really enjoy your group I love being a part of it so I'm glad that you yeah. um, that that is on your heart to do because you're just amazing at it. Oh, thank you. Everything, we, we like to keep everything high vibe. And the affirmation was one of those things I woke up with one morning and it was like said to do it. And then what I started to feel when everyone started to write, it was like, look, look at the power. You know, a lot of people agree when, you know, two or more are gathered with the same purpose, with the That's same right. high energy purpose. It just expands the power of that affirmation, expands the power of how we see ourselves and, and self-perception and manifestation. And we talk about all kinds of juicy, sexy uh, things too, womb healing and, you know, sex manifestation, all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> Talented talented and they have all kinds of stuff going on. It's just really uh, yummy stuff. And I also have a freebie um, that I also give you the link for. And uh, the freebie is uh, about how to follow the path to an amazing life, right? You know what the vision is, but these are actual steps, including some of the ones I shared with you today, that will actually set you up in a position to go after what it is you want. Because there's so many blocks and things in play. Awesome. Um, maybe know the vision but you can't quite get there so yep. that helps the amazing life cheat sheet and I love uh, that. <laughs> amazing a h h h amazing <laughs> um so you'll also have access to that too that's awesome thank you so much You're yeah it was great talking to you today and thank you so right. much for speaking to our community yes thanks for having me you're welcome have a great day we'll talk soon okay bye-bye